Hey, welcome back to the Auto Tech Garage. I want to give you guys a sneak peek into one of the jobs we've been doing a lot of lately. Behind me, we've got a Subaru WRX. It's got some lower engine noise, and we're going to need to put a short block in here. A short block is basically the lower half of the engine assembly. We're going to reuse the cylinder heads and a lot of the other components. And I'm not going to give you a full tutorial on this, but I'm going to give you a lot of little insights to the entire job, what's involved in it, and uh, how it goes. Well, here we are in the garage today. We've got this Subaru 2.0 liter turbocharged, intercooled with some engine noise. And I want to let you guys take a listen to this. We're going to get into some of the details on this car. It's going to involve disconnecting the battery, draining all the fluids out of it. We're going to need to disconnect all the components that are connected to the engine, wiring harness, fuel lines, you name it. Everything's coming out of here. We're going to remove the engine completely. We're going to put it up on an engine stand where we can remove all the timing chains on it. The cylinder heads have to come off. It's a pretty involved job and we're going to give you a couple little uh, sneak peeks at what's going on here as we go through the job. So after a little bit of work, we've got the radiator removed. We've got the air conditioning refrigerant recovered and disconnected. We've got the fuel hoses disconnected, fuel lines disconnected, uh, electrical harness has been disconnected, starter disconnected, bell housing bolts all out, torque converter bolts out, they go in this hole, by the way, torque converter bolts. And pretty much everything around the perimeter of the car has been disconnected. Now it's time to connect the engine hoist and remove the engine. Be sure you've got clearance on the hood. Now separated from the torque converter and the engine's ready to come out of the engine bay. Here's a peek at the engine bay with the engine removed. You can see the engine computer, the front of the transmission and the torque converter. Here's the transmission oil cooler. And here's where the engine belongs. Well, it looks like my mechanics have told me if we can't get this thing running, I'm gonna have to make this car work on my own. Flintstone power. So we finally got the engine out of this Subaru here. We need to put it up on the stand so that we can disassemble everything on it. We need to strip this thing all the way down to the bare block. We might even have to go a little bit further on it. We need to evaluate exactly what failed on this and why. And then we can start the rebuilding process to put this back together. We need to get all the components cleaned up, make sure they're all flushed out properly and ready to use. There's no other damage anywhere and other other components. And if that's the case, we can do a full reassembly on it, put this thing back in the car and make it work. Let's take a look and see what we've got. This is right about where the do-it-yourselfer is contemplating some life choices. So here we are. We had a little bit of work to do to get this engine all the way stripped down to the engine block so that we could take a look at the connecting rods and things to see what exactly failed on it. Oh yeah, and that noise we heard. I think we found it. Um, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We've got to go through all the components on here, probably check the cams and all the components internally to see if there's any other damage anywhere. A lot of cleanup to do. We want to make sure there's no debris anywhere, nothing's hidden anywhere. Everything's got to get flushed out and cleaned up before we can reuse any of these components. We're going to strip this all the way down to the crankshaft so you can see exactly what's on the inside of this thing and how it comes apart.
Ready? Yeah. We've got this lower end of the engine split in half so that you can see all the components laid out. I've got in front of me the crankshaft. We've got all the pistons out. We've got the bearings apart. So you can take a look at those. Um, we're gonna show you here the main bearings, what they look like. And then, then we've got some of the connecting rod bearings here. And you're gonna see when you take a look in at this one, this is the one that was loose and the bearing was completely wiped out. It must have spun the bearing and ate itself to death because there's nothing left of it. We got no pieces left anywhere. Um, obviously they, they spread themselves around, but um, that's the failure on this engine. These here are the main bearings. They hold the crankshaft in place. I want to talk to you a little bit about what the heck is that? Oh, that's right. It's the like and subscribe button. Make sure you honk that horn for notifications. This is what a cylinder looks like on this engine. This is a cylinder with a piston installed. You can see the valve reliefs cut into the piston. That gives clearance for the valves when they're open. Here I have a piston, it has some piston rings on it, the wrist pin, this is the connecting rod, and then these are the connecting rod caps. The bearings go inside of here, and they connect here on the crankshaft. Here we are, we've got our new engine from Subaru. This is what they call a short block. A short block is essentially the lower half of the engine, or in this particular vehicle, because it's a horizontally opposed four cylinder, it's not really the lower half, kind of the middle half. We've got cylinder heads on both sides and we've got the engine block in the middle. The block consists of two halves that are mated together. In between the two halves are going to be the crankshaft. It's got four pistons in it, connecting rods, bearings, everything we need in the bottom end of the engine to get this reassembled. All brand new from Subaru. We just need to swap over all the parts that we've removed from the old vehicle after they've been cleaned up, of course, and gone through and put this back together and we should be able to make it run. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. I know everybody likes a nice unveiling, brand new parts. Let's take a peek. There it is, a nice, shiny new short block. Let's get a look at it. We're getting ready to assemble the engine on this Subaru and I wanted to give you a sneak peek here at what the engine gasket set looks like from Subaru. In here we've got the cylinder head gaskets. These are multi-layer steel gasket. They require a very special torquing process. It's, um, it's pretty important to get that process correct when putting these cylinder heads back on. And then we've got some other gaskets here as well, exhaust gaskets valve cover gaskets, all kinds of O-rings and seals, intake manifold gaskets, rear main seal. Luckily our engine short block has already come with a rear main oil seal. We can save that for another day. Some spark plug tube seals. We've got this engine almost assembled. We've got a few pieces left we've got to put on it and then we're going to get ready to put this back inside the car. I'm going to lower this engine back into the engine bay. We've got a lot of work to do here. We have to reconnect everything we've disconnected. Of course, all the torque converter bolts go back in, bell housing bolts, starter motor, all the hoses and belts before we can fire it up. Now we've got it running. It sounds pretty darn good. I think we're going to make this client happy, get their engine running back the way it's supposed to. Hopefully they'll 
be able to put another 150,000 miles in this car. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying this content. I want to remind you to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.